The following is rated S for spoilers. Inspired by the mind of George R.R. R. Martin and the studio that brought us the video game equivalent of waterboarding comes a new type of Soulsborne experience that changes the series forever with one very important twist. You get a pretty pony. Elden Ring. Stand in awe of the expanse that is Elden Ring, as From Software releases their most ambitious Souls game since they called it Kingsfield, taking the usual sadistic formula out of the traditional series of gated hallways into a vast open world filled to the very brim with every single thing that made you suffer in every previous title, which somehow took the series status from four hardcore gamers to universally beloved, except for people who want to complain about the menus or whatever. By finally executing from software's plan of making everyone get good whether they want to or not. In a title that proves Souls games aren't just for masochists that would voluntarily throw themselves in front of a balls kicking machine. Or maybe just proves that somewhere deep inside, we are all balls kicking machine guy. Now that it's mainstream, I'm pretty sure making fun of these games is considered kink shaming. Explore the sheer magnitude of the lands between. As the surreal and beautiful nightmare scapes of the Souls aesthetic, are blown up American extra large, and you'll travel through dramatically different landscapes and like 10 distinct varieties of poison swamp to absolutely get stomped on in each and every one of them. Where despite the fact that you're in a Skyrim sized world, you'll still do the Dark Souls thing and run past all the dudes to collect graces just so you can declench your sphincter a little bit, which is luckily made much easier because they gave you a double jumping horse only to realize that you've gone too far as you get completely demolished by a single enemy. Then discover the true genius of Elden Ring, as you simply pack it up and go somewhere else for a while, where the mostly unbarred environment allows you to completely avoid the futility of beating your head against a single boss for hours which plagued the previous titles. Then watch in horror as your dumbass does that anyway, because getting beat down by Margit 20 times has injured your pride. That is, if you can pry yourself away from meandering into every cave to collect all the weapons you don't have the build for in an open world experience that doesn't so much as hold your hand as abandon you during childhood. Miyazaki said he was just going out for cigarettes. That was 45 years ago. Uncover the machinations of the Elden Ring and step into the shoes of the Tarnished, another dreg of a protagonist that finds themselves in a world where every person, animal, and plant wants to kill them. Tasked to fight a bunch of demigods and reforge the pieces of the Elden MacGuffin in a narrative unheard of for a Souls game that sort of lets you know what's going on from the get-go, but still somehow manages to be just as vague as you piece together the cryptic dialogue of the numerous weirdos and creeps around you, and try to parse lore with a similarian level of made-up fantasy names to keep straight, which is probably what has kept George R.R. R. Martin from writing more Games of Thrones for all these years, despite the fact that 95% of the player base will ignore it completely and their way to the round. Very well. It is safe here. in favor of their personal storyline big sword kill guy. But hey, I guess somebody's got to keep the Souls YouTuber economy afloat. Roll around like you're on fire in the frenetic combat of Elden Ring that revamps the systems of the previous titles and adds the unthinkable, a jump button. Which mostly means you'll have a second thing to mash until you rub your fingerprints off other than dodge. Then jump into some of the sweatiest Souls combat you've ever experienced where new additions like guard counters and awkwardly fighting from horseback add variety to the encounters. Unless you're a magic user, where you'll cheese out everything from a safe distance just like normal, to constantly get instantly bodied so hard you die in real life, in combat that will test all the skills you've built up in countless hours of the previous titles, and inevitably crush your ego on the altar of some horrible construct with way too many limbs or simply a big dog, until you just bite the bullet and invite strangers to help you take them down or summon an upgradable spirit jellyfish because honestly, why not? In some of the most ridiculous fights you've ever seen in a Souls game, none of which will prepare you for the game's true battles. The one against the game's bad optimization and every dead who keeps trying to get you to jump off a cliff. You know, nothing quite gets me in the headspace to appreciate this game's painstakingly crafted setting more than reading 40 messages that say Fort Common Knight. So put on your oversized hat and get ready to praise the ring for a gaming experience that treats you like you're smarter than you actually are, which despite its highs and lows, deserves genuine respect for sticking to its genuinely unique design, that attempts to truly make you feel like you're exploring a forgotten world and not just checking off boxes on a list, 
And I'm not just saying that because of the Stockholm Syndrome anymore. Starring. Dying. Crying. Misjudging the jump and dying from fall damage. Rolling to your death. Missing every swing on your horse. Endless cheese. Getting invaded at the worst time. Griefing in PvP as revenge. Insisting you double wield the big weapons despite fat rolling. Hitting every wall in case they're an illusion. Respecting over and over. Destroying all furniture around you. Patches. Looking like a child who dressed themselves for peak stats. Debating on killing an NPC for their swag. Laughing at Rudon's ridiculous horse. Crying around Rudon's ridiculous horse. Getting hugs after trying your best. And being maidenless, in game and in real life. Elden Finger Ring, but whole. The real threat of this game isn't the massive dragons or powerful demigods, it's the crabs and lobsters. Seriously, I haven't been this threatened by seafood since I got food poisoning at Red Lobster. Tell us what you'd like to hear in my epic voice in the comments below. I Saifu with my waifu. There is no such thing as failure. You either succeed or you learn. You heard about Pluto. That's messed up, right? I'm tired of people walking into bars. It puts the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again.